Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, start? Uh, if there's anybody outside, come on in and sit down, and we'll get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope you've had a productive week here at uh, TechEd. Uh, probably got a lot of exercise running back and forth across the convention center. I think when I go back to Seattle, I'll probably need to buy some new shoes. Um, and uh, hope you're looking forward to joining the party tonight. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, my name is David Groom. I'm a program manager on the, uh, the Skype team now. As you know, uh, Link is now part of Skype. And I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, a new product we have here called Link Room Systems. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about my background. I'm uh, almost a 15-year veteran of Microsoft, uh, joined in 98. And uh, initially, I probably spent the first uh, 12 or so years uh, working on Windows Mobile and Windows Phone. So if you're familiar with those products, uh, the early uh, smartphone stinger project, I worked on some of those things. And a couple years ago, I continued uh, working in the area of communication by uh, joining the Link team. And uh, with Link, uh, as I'll show you today, uh, we've been working on uh, making sure that we have really great communication and collaboration in the meeting room uh, with the Link Room system product I'm going to show you. One other thing I'd like to say is that when I was back in the Windows Phone uh, team, it was very easy to go out and do a demo on the road. I could pick up a couple phones, throw them in my backpack, jump on a plane, and I'd be good to go. With these guys, it's a little bit different. It's a great product, but you don't just throw them in your backpack. And in fact, I've learned a lot about uh, shipping and freighting over the last couple months. And just to let you know, uh, the demo here, it looks like everything's good to go. I think you're going to really have uh, a good time watching what you see. Uh, but when the Crestron team, Crestron's the manufacturer of this product, when the Crestron team and I were planning to uh, get ready for the demo this week, they took special care to get everything ready and shipped it over from New Jersey uh, early last week. We tracked it day by day. Everything was looking good. Then Friday we got a phone call and a photograph. Big uh, wooden box busted open with a bunch of parts spilling out. And we were just, oh my god, what are we going to do? Like, Well, what happened to the displays? Displays look like they're fine. Everything's going to be good. So I said, well, let's just be certain. Uh, when you fly in there tomorrow, make sure and take a look at the displays, because I want to make sure, sure everything's OK. That day, I was getting ready to leave uh, for uh, New Orleans from Seattle and uh, checked in with the, with the team down here and said, so how are those displays doing? Don't have good news for you. <laughs> One of the displays got hit, too. It looks like they dropped the the other box on top of the display box. So the uh, Crestron team uh, put their best folks on it, and they got us uh, another display down here last night. So everything's good to go. But uh, there's a, certainly a lot of uh, drama to be had <laughs> in this particular field. OK, so uh, let me start off here by kind of giving you a, a rundown of what we're going to cover today. Um, well, as I said before, I'm going to show you the link room systems. We'll do a nice demo. Um, I'll also explain you know, kind of what, what it's all made of. What are the features? What's the functionality? Not only from the client side, I'll also speak a little bit uh, from, the, from the IT side, the, uh, the server side. Some of the things that you need to prepare for, some best practices, uh, that sort of thing. And then finally, uh, I'll share some of our uh, OEM plans, our partner plans, the, the, the folks that are manufacturing these, uh, this product uh, and the timelines that will be available. Um, and then when you, as you uh, come away from this session, um, hopefully you'll, you'll understand that uh, Link is not only available on your client and on mobile devices, but it's going to be an integral part of the meeting room experience. Uh, and that includes not only uh, the ability to uh, talk uh, can you uh, mute that? The, not only the support for voice, but also support for great video and uh, collaborative opportunities. Again, we'll talk more about that. And then finally, uh, a product that uh, we've really thought about from the IT admin side to make sure that their lives are uh, also, um, that their, their work is well thought of. So, I talked to some folks uh, that are joining this session earlier today, and um, some of you are using Link 2010, some are using uh, 2013. For those of the, you that maybe aren't really uh, using the 2013 client yet, you're, you're, or maybe you're just beginning, 
Uh, one thing you should note is that with the 2013 release, uh, one thing that we really focused on was making uh, video an integral part and an improved part of, of the link uh, experience. Uh, and that includes such things as uh, ensuring that um, not only uh, the desktop client is covered uh, in terms of video, but also uh, on mobile clients as well. So as you know, if you have a Windows phone, uh, we have a, a really nice client for, for the Windows phone, uh, Windows Phone 8. Also uh, the iPhone and, uh, and Android devices as well. So having a great video support there. Um, through uh, this, uh, ad adding uh, H.264 uh, SVC, uh, we also enable the ability to support 1080p. As you may know, uh, 2010 was uh, limited at 720p. So a lot, a lot of focus on, on uh, the area of uh, video improvement. Another aspect of the move from 2010 to 2013 was making the, the meeting room experience much better with, uh, with Link. And if you look at, at where we were at with, with Link 2000, uh, 2010 and some of the, uh, those are the aspects as they apply to meetings, um, one thing that you found was that you know, we, we really wanted to make sure that remote users who were dialed in from, um, from let's say, a, a branch office or whatever, that they were made to feel part of the, of the meeting. You know, today, they may have poor audio, they may have no video, uh, and they may feel like you know, they're not really a full part of the, of the meeting room experience for those folks that are actually in the room. Um, another thing we found was that from a collaboration perspective, uh, meeting rooms tend to be islands. Uh, the folks in the room are able to collaborate with each other via whiteboarding and that sort of thing uh, very easily, but maybe not so much uh, for the folks that are, again, uh, attending remotely. Um, one other big uh, pain point is set up and start, uh, start up and uh, set up time. Uh, that can be a real big issue. And finally, uh, the ability to, uh, to link in um, web and uh, mobile endpoints, as we talked about before. So some of our goals for, uh, for Link 2013, as it applies to the meeting experience, is to uh, innovate on video-based solutions, make sure that we had uh, really good video, um, make the meetings uh, more productive from a collaborative experience, and that includes, um, for example, PowerPoint uh, collaboration, um, document collaboration, and also whiteboarding. And then uh, finally, just generally solving the, the meeting room problem. So with that in mind, if you think about meeting room, uh, meetings today, um, I'd like to ask the audience, uh, how long do you typically think it takes to, to start up a meeting when you come into uh, a meeting with some AV equipment? Any show of hands? 8 to 12 minutes, Eight to 12 minutes 10 to 12? 30 minutes? OK. <laughs> well, it sounds like your, your, your findings uh, are pretty close to ours. Uh, we did kind of an internal study, and we found that folks that are coming into a meeting room, maybe because they don't, they're not familiar with the equipment in the room, um, but it takes an average of about eight minutes uh, to, to basically get everything up and running. And if your boss is sitting next to you, you know how, how uh, torturous a, uh, an experience that can be uh, with him or her breathing down your back. Um, and then, as someone here just said before, 30 minutes, we found that the longest time, 22, so, you know, it's, it's a, a big impediment to a productive meeting. Um, another thing that we, we found was that, um, you know, if, if you don't have good video uh, support in the meeting, that can be something that really takes away from the, from the meeting room experience. And many uh, meeting rooms or meeting co many conference rooms today aren't, uh, don't have good video support. Uh, collaboration, same thing. Um, not a lot of uh, great opportunity to uh, collaborate uh, in a meeting room environment uh, if you need to, for example, share your desktop, to do some work together on a, on a whiteboard, what have you. And then finally, um, if you look at just in general, the, the equipment it takes to, to outfit a, uh, a meeting room in from an AV perspective can be very costly. And then sometimes it's more um, addressed at the executive user as opposed to the uh, many of us who are just, you know, working in small groups, trying to get projects done, uh, that sort of thing. So, I'm here to introduce uh, Link Room Systems to you. Uh, with Link Room Systems, uh, what we tried to do was ensure that everything that you're, you experience and you know in Link uh, is available in some form or another 
um, experience-wise in, uh, in the Link Room system. Um, it's optimized for an immersive experience, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means, but um, you know, the remote user and the, the person in the meeting, they all feel like they're part of the, uh, part of the experience. Uh, it's supported with video, great audio, and also the ability to collaborate freely and fluidly um, with each other. Um, it's easy for uh, users to schedule meetings and also to join meetings. We'll talk about more about that later. And uh, simple for IT admins to deploy. Again, an important, uh, an important thing to think about if you want to ensure a, an end -to -end, a good end-to-end -end story in terms of support and participation. So let's take a look at some of the Link Room System benefits. As I said before, uh, it's Link, so if you're familiar with Link, um, you get all the, um, the experiences that you have with Link in terms of IM, voice, and also video, uh, and the ability to uh, share uh, via uh, collaboration of uh, over PowerPoint and whiteboards, that sort of thing. Um, another thing to note would be that um, what we tried to do was ensure that you can join meetings with a single click. I'll demo that to you shortly. Uh, and the ability to manage, uh, manage meeting experiences through intuitive controls. As you can see here, we've, we've kind of uh, followed the, the Metro design that you see in Windows Phone and, Win uh, and uh, Windows 8. So uh, a simpler and uh, easier to, uh, to manipulate um, uh, control uh, architecture. One thing you also note with the system is that it's always on. So if any time come, someone comes into the room, the, the displays might be dimmed, but the machine itself is on. Once you touch the screen, it'll wake up and it'll be ready for a meeting. Um, remote participants can easily see and hear and be, uh, feel like they're part of the meeting. And it's easy to switch uh, between presenters and uh, whether they be in the room or remote. and it's easy to deploy. Uh, by working through our partners, uh, which I'll uh, show you later, um, we've made it kind of like a, an all-in-one uh, appliance type solution that's uh, easy to deploy if you have the link infrastructure in place. So in a nutshell, um, our belief is that if you can use link, you can use link room systems. Okay, now I'm gonna get to the fun part, the demo. Okay, so if you look at, uh, if you look at the uh, link room system here, um, you see that we have two front of room displays and uh, a console down here, as we call it. Um, the left screen is content, and the right screen is a video gallery, as you'll see shortly. In a pre-meeting state, uh, what we have is basically the, the uh, room systems the room system's uh, calendar displayed. So what's happened is people in the office have scheduled meetings with the meeting rooms. It's been accepted. They've had the link coordinate, uh, coordinates that have been uh, inserted in the meeting invite. And uh, the, the meeting invite shows up as a tile here with the subject line, the meeting organizer, and a join button to indicate that, that the link uh, coordinates are embedded in this, in this tile. Now here's one thing to note. If you look over here, where's my join button? This person didn't include their, their link online coordinates, and we'll talk about how you set that up later. But in this case, the person has, has reserved the meeting room, but it's not link enabled. So if you came into the meeting room, you'd just be meeting with the other people that, that are in the room. And you could do an ad hoc meeting, which I'll show you later. Um, the, the, the view of, this, of the calendar here is, uh, is 24 hours over one day. So you can go, you go from midnight to midnight. You can't see the next day. Uh, but you can scroll back and forth here on the console, which is the same view as up on the right display here. So if we go back and forth, we can see that 10 a.m. we had a brainstorm session with Ann Elk. Uh, I wonder how that went. We had, uh, at noon, Larry Zhang had uh, a movers and the shakers meeting. And then after this uh, presentation, we'll have a, a conversation with President Scroob. Okay, someone might know what I'm referring to there. Um, on the left, what you see is um, basically a, a handy tips for, for end users. Uh, those that haven't uh, used Link Room systems before, if they come in the room, 
they can see some, uh, some helpful tips that helps them understand how they might start. So we believe it's very intuitive, but we also think that a tutorial doesn't hurt. And I can dismiss this if I like. Okay. So why don't we go ahead, and I'm going to uh, join a meeting. And I'm expecting that we'll have some folks down on the uh, showroom floor, down at the booth, and some folks back in Redmond that uh, should be in the meeting. Let's see what happens. OK. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Big voice. <laughs> yes, I OK. OK. So uh, as you see here, um, we have um, five attendees. And uh, as you know, with, with Link 2013, um, we, we basically uh, are able to show the, the most recent five uh, active speakers in the video gallery. So we have uh, five attendees here, uh, all with 1080p video. Uh, Christina, can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> She's our, our test lead on the Link Room System product. She's working real hard with the, uh, our OEM partners right now to uh, get things qualified and shipped. So uh, she looks like she's taking a little break right now, though. Uh, we also have uh, James with us. Looks like he just got a new haircut. And we have Nick on the, uh, on the showroom floor. And then uh, we have Michael over here, which I believe is a laptop uh, that we set up right here. Yep, it's right there. So that's what, there you see the view of the room here. And uh, Shreyans is looking good in his white shirt. Okay, and um, what you see here is, and then we have Simone as well, and something that just happened, Shreyans um, had been at the top of the gallery there, uh, Simone had been, uh, has just joined the meeting and his audio was detected, so it, it popped him up to the, to, the top of the, uh, to the top of the gallery there. Hello, Simone. Okay, so anyway. Uh, Simone, by the way, he's a part-time actor, so you might want to look him up uh, next time you're uh, looking for a good movie. <laughs> okay. So, so what's happened is um, these folks, before we came into the meeting, they uh, had uploaded a, a PowerPoint presentation, and they had uh, they were kind of going over um, a presentation that looks from uh, like it's from Coho Vineyards. And what's happening right now is it looks like the slide just scrolled. So whoever is the meeting room uh, organizer or presenter. Um, they've been uh, scrolling through the slides there. I could also do the same from the front of room display. So we have something called the mode bar controls right here. If I hit, hit that control, it'll ask me if I want to take over as presenter, which I do. I say OK. Organizer only. OK, so they got it locked somehow. But if it was in a, if it was in a different lock state, I could have uh, scrolled through that. Some other things that we can do is, uh, via the mode bar, uh, we can uh, bring up an annotation toolbar, which is essentially a pen or a highlighter. And I can do some uh, underlining, you know, the yellow highlighting. Uh, does anybody remote want to do some highlighting as well? Let's see what happens. Is anybody, anybody highlighting? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we got that far. I was able to highlight. But uh, actually, can you, can you try that from the, uh, the laptop right here? Because I think we should be okay in our domain. Some other things you can do is if, if we have... Um, Did we just, you just see something? Okay, here we go. So it looks like uh, maybe, uh, maybe Nick had done that. So again, this shows you how remote attendees and folks that are in the room are able to collaborate and feel like they're part of the same meetings, part of the same, part of the same content creation process. Uh, let's look at what else we have here. Um, if I look at the content bin, I see there's nothing there right now. What I can do is I can bring up a new whiteboard. I launched the whiteboard, and now I'm able to do some freeform brainstorming. Let's make that a thick line so everybody can see it. 
Looks like the, the remote folks have already started brainstorming. Okay, you can see how they're typing and, and such. Got a smiley face there. We have some very artistic people back home. Um, there's an eraser here. If you're familiar with Link on the desktop, easy to erase. And then one thing that we can do now is, um, if you look in the content bin, actually I'm not seeing it, but um, normally under the content bin, you'd also be able to see the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation that we had before and be able to switch back and forth. What I'll do now is, um, so we've created some content here on the whiteboard. And I think I'd like, now that, now that I'm done whiteboarding and brainstorming, I'll send myself a, a copy via uh, email. You, you, probably difficult to see from where you're sitting, but from this control console down here, I'm able to send the, a copy of the whiteboard to the meeting organizer. I could just as easily delete that, go into the change field, and look up another user in the gal. So I'll go ahead and send that. And now a copy has been sent to the meeting organizer. OK. OK, well, thanks, everyone. Uh, Nick, can you stay online? I'm going to uh, leave the meeting and do an ad hoc session right now. So uh, everyone that's remote, thanks very much. And I'll be uh, calling up Nick here shortly. So to leave the meeting, we can either leave from the, uh, the front of room display here using the mode bar, or we can leave uh, using the, um, the button right here, the red button. This is a leave meeting, surprisingly enough. Um, now, let's say, for example, that was a scheduled meeting. Let's say, for example, that there, there's a colleague and I that come into a room, and we want to uh, do some kind of ad hoc collaboration. So one thing that's uh, really cool about the uh, link room system is we have the ability to share over a, a wired connection, uh, HDMI or VGA. Um, in this case, we have a, an HDMI cable that's been outfitted with a, a, a DisplayPort adapter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate me coming into a room. Um, I could even be at, a, at another company. Uh, you know, I may have not have the appropriate certificates to connect over their network, but I can still share my laptop to do some collaboration. OK, so now as you can see, uh, actually, maybe I can do it from here. So now I've, I've, I've shared uh, my laptop, my, uh, de my laptop uh, view into the room, and I'm able to um, basically collaborate with uh, whoever I happen to be in the room. If there's someone remote that I want to invite into the meeting and share it with them remotely, I can do that as well. So I can do that by basically starting an ad hoc meeting. OK, so there's, there I am. And it asks if uh, I want to share my screen. I say yes. There's a little notification at the bottom of the uh, control console there. OK, so now you see that I've joined the meeting. I now have, I officially have a, uh, a, link, uh, a link meeting. I have my uh, desktop display here. And now I'm going to invite uh, a remote participant. We're going to try to patch in uh, Nick from the, from the floor. See if he could. We could also try Michael. I think he was having a hard time hearing down there. It was so loud. Okay, here we go. 
So now this shows you that uh, I came into a meeting, ad, um, a meeting room ad hoc. I shared my laptop. I wasn't in a link meeting. Uh, and without adding any uh, special credentials or anything else to my laptop in a, at another company, I was able to start a link meeting, keep the content in the meeting, and invite others uh, remotely. That's pretty cool, I think. OK. Thanks. Some other things you can do uh, from, the, from the, uh, the control console here are, uh, we have a, a dial pad support, which allows you to um, dial a PSTN if you have that support available. Um, so that's kind of uh, a quick demo there of, of, the, uh, of the link room system. Let's talk a little bit about uh, meeting types. So if you look at, at, uh, at the different meeting types that you typically see uh, you know, in uh, our work day in and day out, um, there, there's a, a large range of, of meeting room types. Um, it can be everything from just casual conversations to um, knowledge production, um, managing customers, reporting out, that sort of thing. There's also the type of meeting where maybe it's a workshop or an event. Those are typically very large meetings with, with lots and lots of people. What we did with link room systems is we tried to focus on those first, uh, was it four types of, of meeting room scenarios, where typically you may, be, uh, you may have folks on the order of um, maybe four to 16 people in, in, the, in the meeting room. In such cases, um, we found that you would have, um, again, four to six seats in maybe like a focus room, which are very uh, common or becoming more common these days, um, and in a, uh, a slightly larger conference room, say a smaller or, or medium-sized conference room, you'd have six to 16 um, seats. And what we found is that, um, we'll talk a little bit later about the different display sizes, but if you have a focus room, very small room, what you can do is you can take just one display and, and hang that in the room and still have a, a nice li a link uh, room system experience. In that case, what we do is we combine the video gallery and some of those uh, content sharing uh, features, and we combine them into uh, one single screen. And then for the larger rooms, say a, uh, a small or, or medium-sized conference room, again, ranging from six to 16 people, you'd have two displays. And in that case, it allows you to spread out and share the content on one screen dedicated along with the video gallery. One thing I didn't show you uh, previ previously is the fact that um, you can show the, uh, the display in uh, three different ways. One would be the video gallery stretching out across both scre uh, screens in a two-screen uh, display. And um, you'd also be able to do content plus, uh, plus the video gallery, as we saw before, or uh, a, uh, the, the active speaker themselves focused on them and content on the other display. So you can switch between video gallery or video plus, plus content. Let's take a, little, take a look at uh, link room system hardware. So as I said earlier, um, link room system is a, an appliance. It's, a, um, it's dedicated to uh, the, the meeting experience. And therefore, what we've done is um, we have locked down the, the UI in such a way that you're not going, the end user will not be able to go in and, for example, open a web browser or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. You're always inside that link, link room system experience. Um, and because of that, um, we, we refer to the, um, the PC that drives this machine as an appliance PC, as you can see here. Uh, if you're in the AV world, uh, you may refer to it as the codec. Um, the appliance is based on uh, Ivy Bridge uh, and Intel chipset uh, with the 4000 series graphic um, support. Reason being is uh, the 4000 series support is required for um, 1080p at 30 frames per second encoding of the video. Uh, we also have the video, a video capture card, as I showed you here, uh, with VGA or HDMI support uh, for wired uh, content sharing over your desktop. Uh, cameras are, are 1080p uh, wide field of view. And what we've tried to do is um, maintain a minimum of 90 degrees field of view so that those folks that are sh uh, sitting closest to the camera, you'll be able to capture them from shoulder to shoulder across the table. So we want to make sure that you're able to capture a good view of the, of the room close up. 
Um, we expect that next generation uh, round table will also be supported once it comes out. The displays here are uh, 1080p displays, and they range anything from 55-inch uh, displays up to 84-inch um, displays, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, the console control here is uh, 720p, and it's around 10 inches. And that sits on the desktop, or the, ta the tabletop. Uh, audio is uh, wine-bad audio. In some cases, you may see uh, the, the microphone in the uh, in the camera if you're in a uh, small room or in larger rooms uh, you may see a tabletop mic or a stereo top mic sitting on top of the table for a nice uh, stereo audio. Operating system is based on Windows Embedded 7 uh, and in the future we'll be of course moving to, to Windows uh, Embedded 8 um, and we support the app locker, uh, write files and firewall to ensure again that uh, the appliance is locked down and you can only use it for the link room system experience. We don't want uh, users getting in and um, you know, potentially causing a support uh, call type issues with the admins. Um, and then on, on every system, the link client is, is actually running in, in the background uh, in, in partial suppress mode. You're seeing the, the video aspects and the content sharing aspects on the front of room displays and then the link room system software that was developed with the Link SDK is what we uh, use in, in the uh, control console here. Um, and then from a manageability perspective, we'll be talking about this later, but we're, we'll be providing a, an admin portal so, you can, so the IT uh, admins can um, monitor the, the state and health of the room and uh, with the admin portal make uh, tweaks or changes as necessary. Uh, and we'll have update uh, and monitoring available as well. So for example, every evening at around 3 a.m., depending on how you set things, uh, Link Room Systems will go out, check for an update. If there's an update available, it'll download it, um, make the update, restart the system, and then uh, the system is fully updated. Finally, uh, a SCOM management pack will be available as well if you uh, have SCOM reporting. So the question was, do any of the features require Exchange 13? Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, there is some flexibility in terms of which version of Exchange you use. Uh, that's not the case with the Link Server version. Um, that has to be Link Server 2013. Right. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Uh, I believe so. Um, we'll, we'll take a look um, and see if that's in there. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk very quickly about uh, partners. Uh, not that they're not important. Um, they're very important to us. Uh, and again, uh, Crestron did a heck of a job today getting everything ready. Uh, the full list of the partners is uh, Crestron, uh, as you see here today, Life Size, and uh, Polycom and Smart. Uh, we actually finished uh, build, uh, shipping the code last Friday, so the part, our OEM partners right now are busy doing integration and testing, uh, and they'll have that uh, ready for qualification probably uh, within the next month or, month or two, so you'll start seeing these products available in the marketplace um, Q3 of the calendar, this calendar year. Um, and here's a little bit more detail in terms of the products we can expect from them. Uh, Crestron is going to base their initial offerings on the 65-inch displays. Uh, Life Size will be doing um, a product based on 55-inch displays. And uh, Smart, uh, again in Q3, will be doing a 70 and an 84-inch version. So a lot of different hardware variations there. One other thing to note about the Crestron system here is that they've added some additional controls on the, on the right-hand side of the, uh, the console so that you can integrate such things as lighting controls. That's something that Crestron's very well known for, uh, environmental controls, and they're, they're differentiating by integrating some of those features in. So let's talk a little bit about meeting scheduling. So, you know, earlier we talked about um, scheduling a meeting with the, with the link room system, and creating a meeting invite is, 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 is pretty easy. Uh, what you do is you go into Outlook just like you would uh, to schedule a meeting um, um, like you do today, and you would add the, uh, the mail account for the meeting room. So here we have an example of 
a, uh, a user, and also the meeting room account name that we've added here. So that's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Second thing we do is we make the meeting uh, an online meeting. And many of you are probably already familiar with this today, but this is a critical step to uh, ensuring that, again, that join button shows up there so that when folks come in the room, they can, they can join in one click. Uh, you want to make sure that that eight minutes uh, goes away. Um, and then finally, uh, you send. So it's, it's pretty easy. Um, you can do some, some things uh, when you um, create uh, your, your, your back-end settings that allow you to include such things as when the meeting is automatically accepted, including a message uh, that is sent to the meeting organizer that tells them um, some things about link room systems, uh, particularly if it's a new user. Uh, it might be helpful for them to know, for example, that when they go to the meeting room, um, you know, take a look for the, the join button. Um, that's all you need to click the thing. Or to remind uh, other users that when they uh, create a, a meeting instance to um, make it online. So we also have support custom meeting types. In the case of a private meeting, uh, where you click the, uh, the, the private button there, um, basically what it does, it removes, it removes the subject line so that if you have something that's maybe a sensitive topic at your company, um, the, the user or the organizer comes in and they won't, or someone that's not involved with the meeting comes in and they, they'll notice, they'll, they won't know what, uh, what subject you're discussing. The other thing we can do is uh, uh, require authentication uh, from the LRS to the meeting. So the organizer can basically create a pin code so that in order for you to start up a meeting, you have to insert the pin code uh, when you join a meeting. Otherwise, it's, uh, it, it blocks the, the user from uh, entering. In the case where you have a, a 2013, um, link 2013 hosted meetings, um, there's, this, this is supported. If an organizer is on a 2010 pool, however, um, Link Room System doesn't have the ability to join uh, a private meeting. Basically, would it would be only public meetings. So that's one, uh, one feature that's not supported. So this is kind of what it looks like in terms of the UI uh, for these custom meeting room types. Um, as you can see on the left there, we have uh, one, one of the tile, meeting room tiles that is, uh, includes a, a lock on it that indicates that you need a uh, a pin code. And this shows you the UI that you would see on the console screen here uh, in order to input the pin code. So you'd join the meeting, you'd be prompted with uh, the, the field that asks you for your, uh, your user ID and the pin code, and then you uh, are allowed into the meeting. Let's talk a little bit about manageability. This is more the, the IT uh, part. Um, so pr as far as provisioning uh, LRS accounts, um, the first thing you have to do is uh, go into Exchange and set up um, a mailbox identity. Um, and we have an example here of how that's done. Once that's done, we go into Active Directory and um, we create uh, a password to enable account for a, lo uh, a login account. And then finally, we go into, uh, into Link and we create a SIP account. Um, as you'll note here, uh, we have a new commandlet uh, for 2013 in support of Link Room System, um, the CS Meeting Room uh, commandlet. And that uh, basically uh, controls some attributes of, of the Link Room System account. So by these three actions, you're able to set up a, a Link Room System account on the back end. Um, if a public meeting is organized by uh, a 2010 user or someone on uh, OCS, uh, there'll be no uh, multi-view as uh, that's like supported in, in 2013. And then you won't, you'll also um, uh, will not be able to support 1080p video. So we're basically restricted by those earlier limitations. That's just uh, something to note. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But Office 365 is supported. No, no, it's it it, it it it's all locked down. Um, no ability to to expand on on what's available here. 
Yeah. And again, the main reason we did that is because um, we talked to a lot of uh, a lot of enterprises. They they were they wanted to ensure that it wasn't something that could be um, you know plugged into or or going 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 in through the back door somehow uh, when it came to communication. I, yeah, um, there, there's also test implications. Um, we want to make sure that's a, a good experience, and if if we kind of define the parameters in terms of displays, uh, we're able to test everything and, and what we believe are the, the main user experiences and provide for a, a better user experience. So that's, that's one reason. So the question would be, uh, how would you determine which uh, room is available? Resource availability. Resource availability. Uh, so uh, there's a couple things you can do. From, a, from an end user perspective, you would um, just look in, in, a, uh, in Outlook, and you could see uh, their availability, just like you could uh, other folks' uh, availability, um, if that answers your question. Yeah, that's what's one way of doing it. So there's not a certain facility like I need a room with X amount of seats for this time. Oh, I see. All rooms available. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so a little bit. Oh, there's a question. Uh, in terms of account usage, um, as we saw before, we have Exchange Active Directory and Link, link Server. Um, the, the Exchange side of things is basically used for uh, calendar information. For, so for all the calendar information you see here, that's pulled from Exchange. Uh, that whiteboard that I sent to the meeting organizer, uh, that's also handled over Exchange. On the, uh, basically, the, 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 the meeting setup side, uh, the audio, video, um, setting up a link call, that's all, of course, um, handled via the link server. And then both of those, um, both Exchange and, and link server, uh, depend on Active Directory for authentication. So um, when we think about deployment, there's some things you should think about. Um, if you have... Um, a, a mixed pool of 2010 and 2013 users. Um, sometimes uh, when you do automatic lookup, uh, you may get pointed to a, a 2010 server, in which case it wouldn't be able to recognize uh, a room system. In such cases, uh, we have uh, the ability to um, basically update the RSV record here with some information that's indicated above that allows you to point to the 2013 pool so that you don't get a, a, a 404 um, not found uh, error. You can also uh, configure this uh, manually. I'm going a lot of, through a lot of uh, detailed information here, but we'll be um, uh, publishing a, a deployment guide probably in the July time frame, and it goes through all this, this stuff. Um, there is also some things to think about in terms of uh, high avail availability and data resiliency. Um, so for example, um, if the organizer's pool, meaning the, the person that uh, called the meeting, uh, if there's anything wrong with their server, you would have some issues with the, the ability to join the scheduled meeting. So it kind of depends on the, on the, um, the, the state of the, uh, of the organizer's meeting. In that case, you would, you would see the tile here uh, grayed out. Um, custom meetings depend on um, primary or secondary registrars. And... Um, there's some other things that kind of indicate here um, whether or not certain features will be available. Main point is that um, it's not only the link room system settings, but also uh, the, the settings and configuration of the, um, the meeting organizers that may impact how the, um, how the schedule and the ability to join meetings will, will appear. 
one other kind of final point to call out here is um, the calendar that you see on the front of room here, uh, that's cached. So if, for example, the exchange uh, server is down and uh, you come into the link meeting room, you'll still see the, uh, the calendar for that room uh, cached on the machine. You know, I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to take a look at that for you. The question was, uh, what's the frequency of the polling of that caching? I can uh, give you my email uh, after this, and I can look that up for you. Yep. Uh, we also support um, different sorts of uh, de deployments, uh, those being um, hybrid, uh, on-prem, and, uh, and in the cloud. Uh, for uh, online deployment uh, topologies, uh, we have uh, both hybrid tenants and, and online tenants. This kind of gives you a table of, uh, of the different combinations that are supported. So for example, on-premise, um, you know, obviously if you had both link and exchange on-prem, that's supported. Uh, Office 365, uh, both are supported. Um, and then in the case of hybrid, if the link, uh, if the link server is on-prem and the exchange uh, side is, is online, uh, that's uh, supported. And of course, um, as we said above, uh, both the online versions are supported. The one thing that, you, that wouldn't be supported is the uh, um, link online and exchange on-prem. The earlier question was about uh, different exchange versions, although uh, link room system depends on uh, link 2013 server. Uh, different exchange versions are, uh, are are possible. So exchange 2013, exchange 2010, and 2007, I believe. Um, so let's talk a little bit about on-prem provisioning, uh, provisioning an account for on-prem. So the first thing you would do is you would, would identify a, a conference room that you wanted to enable, uh, and and then uh, you would uh, determine whether or not it has an exchange mailbox. If it already has a, a, um, a mailbox, you'd set the mailbox properties and then uh, through Active Directory uh, enable an account for login. And then at that point, you would, you would set up an, the, uh, the SIP account in, uh, in link, the Link 2013 pool. Um, and if, that didn't, if there wasn't a mailbox account already set up, then you'd have to go through and set that up uh, from the beginning and also do the same with Active Directory. Pretty straightforward. As far as Office 365 provisioning goes, um, you would uh, create uh, a, um, an online PowerShell session, uh, determine whether or not there was an exchange mailbox uh, present, set the mailbox properties, and then uh, go ahead and connect to a link online PowerShell session, and uh, then enable the account uh, via the link 2013 pool using the LRS commandlet. Um, and then one thing to note would be that with Link Online, you need the uh, P2 support um, in terms of licensing. So you have to go into the, the licensing menu and ensure that uh, P2 at a minimum is, is uh, supported. So earlier we talked about some uh, tools that we, we built and made ready for uh, IT admins to um, basically monitor the health of the rooms and the state of the rooms. Uh, the first thing we're going to offer is something called the uh, Remote Admin Portal. This is a, a web-based interface that allows uh, IT admins to determine, again, what the health of the room looks like. So if you can make this out, um, essentially what we do is um, uh, we're, we're able to uh, change the, the credentials of the room remotely. Um, so for example, if you went and you decided that you needed to change the password for whatever reason, you wouldn't need to go to the room. You could do it from, the, from this uh, remote admin portal. Um, if someone had called uh, the help desk and said that they thought that the meeting room audio was too loud, um, you could change it from, say, 40 to 60% all remotely. Um, so there's, there's that sort of support. Um, you can also check uh, hardware information. Maybe uh, you hear that there's some issue with some kind of the, the camera, the audio. You're able to uh, determine if that's in the system. And also uh, determine whether the network settings are, are uh, set appropriately. So a lot of different things that you can not only monitor, but also uh, configure remotely.
So you, there's the ability to not only look at a, a single account um, via the admin portal, but also uh, kind of like a summary page of all the rooms. And as you see here, um, a lot of these rooms are offline, uh, but three of the rooms are, are online and it looks like the health is good. So if we drill down on, on one of the rooms, there's a lot of different information that we can find here. Uh, again, we, we see that the speaker volume set at 40%, mic volume's at 40%. That person complained that it was a little bit too loud, so maybe we set it down to 20. Um, uh, it's not listed here, but we could uh, uh, include the manufacturer and model name, um, a number of different things that we could find out information on the room. And then there's kind of like a, a very quick uh, health summary that you can also uh, take a look at. Um, the top there, that, that green check mark, um, the aggregate uh, state, basically summarizes um, the, the state of all the, the items that are below it, including server connection, audio, and, and video device health. So for example, if the audio device was yellow or red, that aggregator would probably also turn yellow or red. So the, the remote admin portal, as, as far as architecture goes, um, what happens is that the, the console here uh, has certain uh, profiles uh, that it is um, that is keeping record of. And the, uh, the admin port portal taps into those, um, those, those presence categories, as it were, uh, and allows uh, not only monitoring, but the ability to communicate back and forth in terms of setting those, uh, changing those settings. So that was the admin portal. Let's talk a little bit about uh, SCOM. So um, we've uh, pulled together some documentation on a uh, system uh, center operation manager management pack for, um, for link room systems, which allows you to track event logs. In the case of SCOM, um, this is monitoring. It's not uh, remote configuration as it was with the admin portal. Here's kind of a, an overview of, yeah, sure. Um, I'll need to follow up on that question. I'll give you my email later. Yeah. Um, but this gives you kind of a summary of all the, all the meeting rooms and their health, uh, what kind of state they're in. Again, this is a, a web interface. Um, and then the ability to go into one room and, and drill down on, um, on, the, on the state and uh, whether, they're, whether you need logs or not uh, to, to drill, down, drill down further. So that's my presentation. Um, and just to summarize, um, with Link Room System, uh, we want to take uh, all the best video and audio experiences that we've enabled for 2013 and bring them to the meeting room in a way that uh, makes your meetings more productive, uh, whether that be for local users but also remote users. Um, we want to make sure that uh, everyone has a, has a great experience there. And we also want to make sure that it's not only great for, for end users, uh, but also that it's, uh, it's something that's easy for IT admins to deploy and to monitor and, and configure um, as they roll out uh, more of these units. Final thing to note is that um, all of these, uh, these products are available from our OEM partners again, uh, Crestron, Smart, LifeSize, and later this year, uh, Polycom. And it'll, we'll, you'll see availability start in uh, starting around August time frame. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to step forward to the microphone. I'd be happy to answer anything. If not, I'll put my... Uh... I have a question. Um, yeah, sure. In regards to uh, outside connectivity, and uh, outside of the enterprise, where, what is the roadmap for uh, how that's going to happen and connectivity to other than link systems, i.e. H.264 systems that are outside the enterprise? I mean like outside the domain or? Outside of the corporate network. Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> let me give you an example. I, I work with... Uh, one solution I have today is I work with a, an external company that doesn't have Link deployed internally. Um, one thing that they're able to do today is uh, download a web client, and uh, we're able to uh, communicate that way. 
Um, so that's, that's one solution. But if they have a room system that they're trying to, you know, this is a collaboration session between two, two corporations. Right. And they have a room system, you have okay. the link system. Yep. How are we going to do the interoperability? Are, are you familiar with uh, Federation? Uh, so, so, so you're saying Link Federation would be the answer on that component? Yeah, so w one thing that we do today is, um, uh, for example, uh, LifeSize and, and Crestron, when we're collaborating on this product, uh, we had Federation set up between our accounts, between the two companies, and we were able to um, basically do what you're describing, uh, have Link sessions, uh, both from the desktop and from the, the LRS client. Um, one thing to remember is that the link room system is, is just a link endpoint, so it, it acts much the same way as you, you uh, would expect a, a link account to on the desktop. Yeah, and I missed part of your presentation. Is there actually an interface for you to feed a PC's input to, into that if you were in the room and needed to share an app, or is the apps available on the appliance itself as a standard desktop? You mean additional applications? Well, say that, say that somebody walks in the room, yep. is there expected to be, if they're in the room and expected to share a presentation, right. are they supposed to walk in with a USB key, or are they supposed to walk in with... Yeah. So a uh, couple ways you can do it is, uh, when you saw the, the initial uh, wine presentation there during the demo, uh, what had happened was the remote attendee um, had loaded up the, um, the, mm -hmm. the presentation up in through Link, and then that stays in the, in the content bin. Um, so that other users can potentially um, access so that, it. So that was through the uh, Office Web Th that, that's, services? Th that's just through, through Link 2013. Um, I think to answer his question, the, uh, the HDMI and the USB input, yep. would you say walking into the laptop would be the laptop Well, I mean, that's part of it. You know, if you're walking into the room and the people in the room have the presentation, not somebody outside of the room. Yep. How are they supposed to show that presentation to the rest of the the other participants on the link meeting? Okay. Um, so in in the case of the the PowerPoint presentation I had, somebody else in the, in the meeting had the presentation, showed it. Yep. You didn't start that presentation. Right. Oh, you mean if I'm in the meeting room if here? If you're in the meeting yeah. room itself. So in in that case, um, you would you would bring your own laptop to the meeting and right. you would load it up through your own personal account. And share it through that. And share it that way. Yeah, the, the room itself, there's no way to insert a USB key, for example, and, and, and share a, a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And the reason is, um, again, we want to keep this kind of neutral ground. Uh, we don't um, leave documents behind and that sort of thing after meetings. It's all done um, um, through the link users themselves. hope that makes sense. Yeah. So I saw a couple references to the round, uh, yeah, round table in yes. the presentation. Is that, I had heard that was now known as a uh, Polycom device. Yep. Is that coming back as round table or in a, either way, what's the relevance to the room system? Can it be used as a camera for the room system? Yeah, it can. Okay. Um, basically, Polycom is the one that manuf is, uh, is the manufacturer of uh, the round table now. Right. Um, if you're not familiar with the round table, it's a 360 degree um, view camera that uh, Microsoft had manufactured at one point. Um, we um, um, sold the device to Polycom, and um, they are uh, coming out with a, an HD version of that of that camera. Uh, and once it's available, uh, we'll be able to that you'll be able to use that camera with uh, with Link Room systems. One thing to note, um, and you know, I wasn't able to show it on here because of the kind of camera we're using here. But if you do have a 360 degree view camera. Uh, we're able to show what's called panoramic view across the bottom of the video gallery. Um, so not only do you have the video gallery here of all the happy smiling faces, but the, the in-room view is a band that crosses the, 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 the full display here and gives a 360 degree view, panoramic view. Thank you. Yep. I have a question that's probably not a good one, but sure. uh, you guys own PPI. Uh, Prosecta Pixel. Yep. And if I want to have a modern conference room today, I would have to have three monitors in it because I can't do Prospective Pixel on your two machines and have that in the same room. I live in New York. Real estate's very expensive. Yep. That's very hard to do. Yep. Is there any idea of moving Perceptive Pixel into this arena? I, uh, let, let's, let's put it this way. Uh, our OEM partners are, uh, are free to um, ship 
PPI displays if they so wish, if, if that makes business sense to them. Um, and my expectation is that that's something you'll probably see. Hope that is something of a <laughs> good answer for you. <laughs> oh, so, so what will happen is in, in all these cases, there will be different SKUs de uh, depending on display type. So for example, Crestron today, uh, they have a 65 inch display here. If they so chose, um, or any other company, they could uh, take a PPI display, integrate that into the build. We do some testing qualification certification and then they would ship that, as, they would sell that as a, a separate SKU. Uh, so there, there wouldn't be any kind of plug and play and mix and match and that sort of thing. It would be, you know, like there would be the PPI SKU and the, and the 65 inch uh, uh, SKU that they have today. I guess the main point here is that, as I said before, um, the, the, the link room system is, should be thought of as an appliance uh, that, that's locked down and then if you unplug or plug anything new in, um, the system doesn't work. Well, this is, this is a start and you'll see, I, I think you'll see uh, uh, different variations as we move forward, uh, but this is kind of where we start with this. Yeah. Three quick questions. Sure. Um, do I need any additional licensing, or is my link server cal and ecals cover the room system? Yeah, yeah, you should be able to handle everything through your current link licensing. Um, as I said before, if you're using link online, um, you'll want to make sure you have the, the, the P2 level mm -hmm. at a minimum. Uh, P3, I think, with voice. Um, can the volume be controlled from that control pad? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then the last question, can I join as an admin remote meeting sessions from the admin console? Um, no. So I can't fire up my UK branch so, so when everyone walks in the, the meeting's already joined? No, you'd, uh, what you'd have to do is you'd have to, um, you'd have to get invited to that meeting again as, uh, as, a, as another user. Okay, yeah. thank uh, you. Something like, you're, you're describing something like a remote desktop type um, scenario, right? Um, so I would, I guess I would start the meeting up in the United States, yep. invite the UK conference room, and from the admin console, just start their meeting up so that when everybody files in for the meeting, it's already up and running. I don't have to count on oh, a user from the other end to join. Saying, yep. So that, that's, actually, that's actually a pretty common request you're asking. It's, it's not supported. It's a very common request, and it's something that we're looking at. Um, more common than one might think. <laughs> Next question. So the remote access portal, is that um, like a sort of like a centralized uh, management portal where you can get a holistic view of all your LRS systems and the health of them? Yes. So is that, can that be co-located on an existing link server role or is there a separate um, server for that? Uh, it should be on existing. Okay. Yes. But let me, let me get you some more information. I'm going to put my uh, email down here if you want to follow up with some questions like that. Did you mention the time frame for the round table from Polycom? Uh, that's, that's kind of up to, the, um, to Polycom. Probably best that they, uh, they answer that one. Um, wish I could share more there, but it, it's coming. So this is uh, davgroom, D-A-V-G-R-O-O-M, at Microsoft.com. Feel free to drop me a line. So I'm thinking of all the uh, meeting rooms that I know that have got more or less good high def projectors mounted on the roof and power screens and everything and also you know for eight or twelve people the relatively small size of the presentation monitor is there any facility to actually parallel an existing projector into that box so that you know we can actually leverage the existing projectors and the size of those projectors because if I took that presentation screen to all of the organized the meeting rooms that we have in the organization where I work they'd say no it's too small it's half the size of the thing you're replacing yeah um. Well, as I said, we're, we're, we're kind of starting off with, with uh, delineating the limits of, you know, of, of the hardware and working within that, and I think you may, you may see things uh, change from... Yeah. 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 Right. We'll keep that in mind. Any other questions? Yeah. 
I think it's five megabits per second. Um, yeah, well, actually, my, my point here is that there's, a, there's actually a really good um, technical document that's been published on um, uh, kind of re recommended bandwidth um, support for, for link room systems and other video devices. Uh, I can send you a link um, if, you, if you like. Yes, you can. Uh, if you're familiar with Link Today, um, there's a record button uh, that allows you to record conversations. Uh, if, for example, I was sharing a PowerPoint presentation, it would have the, the PowerPoint presentation with the audio uh, included along with that. Um, well, the, one other thing to note is when, there, when, the, um, when the session is being recorded, um, there's a, an indication at the top of the uh, at the top of the display, a blade, I, I believe, that uh, basically indicates to folks that indeed the, the, the meeting's being recorded just so that it, it's, it's public knowledge. Can you kick off? Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Can you kick off recording from the admin console of a session? Um, you can kick it off from any, from any endpoint. Yeah. I th and that's just a standard feature today, I think, in Link. Step up to the mic so we can get that on the, yeah. So in a normal polycom room-based system today, we can, we can set an end time so that people can't run over. Can you time this so that it automatically shuts off at the end of a, of a time slot? That's actually a really good question, and we debated that one a lot. Um, on the one hand, you want to kind of wrap up meetings and move along to the next. But the other, on the other hand, we kind of felt that well, let's just leave that to the to the, to the people in, in, in the, whoever's using it, just leave it to them to decide that sort of thing. So for example, if, if I were to go over with my presentation here in a, in a scheduled meeting, um, the, the, the timer is ticking down, it's showing me how long we've been in the meeting, but it doesn't force me out. At the same time, if I were to uh, leave, a me uh, leave a meeting, leave a meeting room physically, and not end the meeting, we don't, we don't force the meeting to close. We leave that decision up to you. That's your responsibility. Um, again, we had a lot of debate over whether we should be closing that or not and keeping things tidy, but uh, we felt that, you know, someone might be uh, whiteboarding. They may, want, uh, they may have forgotten that they had left a whiteboard on there, and um, we felt it would be better, better to leave it up to them. So yeah. enhancement. What's that? So possible future enhancement. Uh, we'll, we'll see how things go. Uh, it's definitely a kind of a complex area. A lot of things you need to think about. My yeah. feeling is you probably ought to leave that to the organization and let them define that by group policy or, or, yeah. or link policies, yeah. to be good. honest. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a, a good feature request, I think. Quick question. Do yes. you know if there's any uh, upgrade plans for the Polycom CX7000 for this software version on their, that codec? That's probably something that's best uh, answered by Polycom. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, sir. And only having five on the screen is a limitation of link, or can you put more than five? That's people? that's how many we support today in link. So it's a okay. It's so a, it's a link limitation, yes. not this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think in the in the link client, you'll see. I believe. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but you'll see the, the five most recent speakers, and then you'll see others uh, below that in a, in a row beneath. Um, in the case of Link Room System, what we do is we limit it to five just so that we keep the display clean. Again, another area of debate. Uh, I think originally we had, we'd shown the whole, um, everybody that's in the meeting, but it can get kind of cluttered with a lot of, you know, if you can't see the person's, really see the person's face, if it's a very small square, uh, we thought it really wasn't meaningful, so we kept it to the five most recent speakers. Yes, correct. Yeah. And if, if you wanted to know who all's in the meeting from, from the, media, the, the LRS perspective, you can go into the, the console here. There's a participants tab. And I can see everyone that's, that's, uh, that's, that's joined to the meeting. Um, at the same time, let's say that we, had, we wanted to focus on one person. We wanted to make them kind of like the, the, the focus of the presentation. There's also a, um, uh, a lock on here that you're able to basically touch on the, on the person's name. Um, 
uh, hit video lock, and that just, they, they fill up the whole display, um, and all the rest in the gallery are, are um, uh, relegated to just the participants list. So in that case, what we can do is we can pin. Um, I didn't show you this, but uh, in that video gallery, I can, I can pin speakers. So for example, let's say that there's someone that's being quiet. We don't want them to go away. We want them to stay there for whatever reason. There's actually a pin up in the corner of the tile. We can pin it there, and they'll, they'll stay there. Now, Is that I'm not a change? Is that a change in Link that it's only three or five people? Because I've seen Link presentations where the whole screen is filled. I've seen the panoramics, too, but I've yeah. seen them where the whole screen is filled. So have you guys changed and gone back where it's only five people that can be on the screen? Uh, or is it just for this particular model of what you're doing? Actually, just, just for this model. Okay. Yeah. For, for the 2013 desktop client, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll see more. Okay. Yeah. I just want to be clear on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, you, you could certainly do that. Um, I think the, the main thing here, again, is, and, and this is something you probably did miss in the, in the beginning of the meeting, one of the things that we're trying to do with Link Room System is um, just make it so that when you, when you come into a meeting room, it's one touch, join, start. You have wasted no more time. Uh, I shared a statistic earlier. It was an internal kind of um, survey that we did where we, people were saying that they were, it was taking them between 8 and 22 minutes to to get a meeting started on unknown equipment. So the main, the main purpose in, in this case is just you come into the meeting, you, you hit, the, hit the, the display or the console, you're in, no more wasted time. Yep. Not to say that there aren't other ways you can do it. Yep. Any other questions? Okay. So how long has this been shipping? How long? Uh, it uh, hasn't started shipping yet. Uh, we expect us to, uh, to see units in the market in the August time frame. Uh, as I said earlier, we just finished uh, shipping our code, our final code to uh, OEMs last Friday. Um, they're integrating, doing testing. They'll uh, ship uh, units back to us. We'll do some certification qualification testing, and then they'll be out. Are there units available for piloting at this point? or? There's a gentleman over here, Brian uh, Davis, who I'm sure would be able to advise you there. <laughs> okay, if there's nothing else, no other questions, uh, thank you very much for coming, and I hope you have a good time at the party tonight. <laughs>